podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. It is the age of conquering, pillaging, and trade. Europe is there for the taking. Ready your longships and Viking warriors. The throne of Kalpang is at stake. But be aware of backstabbing and ambitious siblings. Evoke the rage of the mighty Norse gods and have Thor and Odin strike down with furious anger. Now it's time to conquer Europe. Set sail and return as the most prosperous Jarl to become king of Kalpang. It didn't to me neither, but this is the story of Viking Jarl, the board game that's currently on Kickstarter. And tonight we're lucky enough to have on Richard from SB Games, who is the creator and mastermind behind this great game. Is that correct, Richard? Is that how you fall in line with Viking Jarl, the board game? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it, Richard. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it's uh, good to be on your show. Awesome. So before we get into the reason you're here, let's rewind a little bit if we could. We don't have to go back too terribly far, of course, unless you were born into board gaming. But how did you get started into tabletop board gaming, Richard? I guess it was in the beginning of the 90s. I played a lot of Risk and Axis and Allies, that kind of games. So that got me started in the board gaming. And been going at it ever since? Uh, yeah. To and from, so uh, <laughs> it's the last five, six years I've been uh, working on making games myself. So yeah, that's awesome. So um, so great. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So minus um, Viking Yarl, because if I let you pick your own game, my audience might have me drug out into the street and who do who knows what. Um, but so minus your own game, what's your current favorite game, Richard? My current favorite game is, uh, and I guess always will be, Axis and Allies. I love the <laughs> that kind of games. Oh, cool. We have the box, but we've yet to play it. I want to get it to the table one of these days. But, yeah, it's just sitting there with all of our other games we've unfortunately not been able to play yet. So, per se, somebody else like myself hasn't been able to play Axis and Allies. What can you tell us about that game, Richard? It's a, a strategic uh, war game uh, from World War Two, so it's area control, basically battles <laughs> all the time with dice and. Awesome. How does that vary from Risk? Because I've played Risk. I'm a big fan of Risk. Yeah, Risk is more you. I'm not sure how I can. It's similar, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's two different games. You have. Uh, more of uh, uh, two versus two, and uh, risk is everybody against each other. So okay, awesome. So if you own the rights to Axis and Allies as a game designer, what would be one thing you would do to make it better, or yeah, make it a better game? Do you think? Uh, I guess I would add some kind of cards that give you some uh, kind of advantage or something like that, because now it's only pieces and uh, throwing dice so if you have a mission or something like that with a card it would be good okay there you go so that's awesome now the real reason you're here the word on the street is you have a new game on kickstarter richard what can you tell us about viking jarl the board game uh, I tried to make uh, uh, a game that I want to play myself so 
I try to incorporate uh, cards and uh, war and strategic and everything, uh, trade, everything into one game. <laughs> I know it's not uh, easy to do that, but uh, that's what I, I'm trying to do and I hope I achieved some kind of way. Awesome, yeah, so it looks good. Just looking at the Kickstarter page, because that's all I have seen thus far. It looks like a pretty cool game from what I can tell. So per se, um, me and you sat down to play Viking Jarl. How would that look? Wait, how would it sound if me and you sat down to play Viking Jarl? Yeah, it's uh, two to four players, and it's a turn-based game, and uh, each player have their own turn. You have two units that you move around the board, it's a Viking ship and an army, so you can move around uh, on land zones and sea zones and do different kind of uh, actions like trading. You can do pillaging to get silver. You can uh, build settlements and so forth. So uh, it's uh, basically a strategic game. Okay, so how does one win? Like, what would that look like? Am I trying to get victory points, or how do I win the game? Yeah, you win the game by victory points. Uh, the first player to get to a uh, uh, agreed upon uh, number is the winner of the game. I put a scale that you can do play from one to twenty-seven, so you can decide uh, how long you want the game to last. Well, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so that's awesome. So um, during play testing, was there ever anything that wouldn't work that you guys had to? throw out or change in Viking Jarl? Yeah, we have changed it a lot. The last I've been working on this game for the last five or four or five years. So we have changed uh, very much, uh, especially in the gameplay. The board is uh, almost the same from the start. A couple of uh, uh, borders are <laughs> been wiped out and uh, put in new borders, but uh, the map is uh, basically the same, but we have changed the cards and the gameplay, the battle system. What was one thing you had to change from the gameplay? Especially movement. We had uh, like a, our own die for the ship, but that didn't work as well. We had, uh, you get uh, from uh, two to four. So if you got two, you can only move two zones. And if you get four, you can have a bonus and move four zones. So if you are unlucky, you get only two all the time. The, your ship can't move <laughs> that far. So we took away that die. Okay, so now you can move more. You don't have to necessarily be lucky with the die roll. Yeah, and now you can move three with a, with a ship. And you have the army that can move two zones. So. so that's awesome. What would you say is a thing you're most proud of when it comes to Viking Jarl, Richard? I guess uh, from the feedback I've gotten uh, from people who tested it, it's uh, everybody thinks it's a fun game, especially with the uh, Saga cards. It's it's uh, kind of a backstabbing game. <laughs> you <laughs> you try to uh, backstab your opponent. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we love to do a little bit of backstabbing in our family. We don't care too much for the co-op game, so that's pretty cool. So that's awesome. Um, now, um, you said you've been working on it for quite some time, the four or five years. How did you know when it was ready to go ahead and that the game was ready to go and to put it up on Kickstarter? How did you decide that? Uh, we decided that uh, just after Christmas. So we've been working uh, hard to get uh, backers and uh, newsletters uh, to send out. So you have to have a big uh, fan base to to make it on Kickstarter. So so we have basically been working on that uh, the couple of last months. That's for sure. So um, a lot of it seems like a lot of people that are designing games listen to my show and whatnot. So what would be one thing you would suggest to help them grow their base or their fan base or mailing list? Just being out on Facebook on all the groups that you can, uh, especially if you're going on Kickstarter, go on the Kickstarter groups and have your uh, art shown, get feedback, uh, and send out uh, the games to testers. Like me, I've been on a lot of fairs and uh, conventions and shown the game and game and. Uh, and been playtesting it, so that helps a lot. 
and you're probably a little bit biased. You did talk about sending it out to test her. So if somebody wants to um, take somebody else's word for it, is there any um, anybody that any reviews of your game, previews of your game that somebody else can check out and see what other people thought about it? Yeah, we have a couple of uh, reviews on our Kickstarter page. Uh, the latest and the most uh, correct review is about is by uh, a guy called Undead Viking. Okay, the Undead Viking. That's pretty cool. And it looks like you had Unfiltered Gamer as well as Tantrum House. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe you can tell us more about this. I was looking, cruising through your Kickstarter page. But it says that this game is, according to Sam Healy at the Dice Tower, it was one of the 10 most anticipated games of 2018. How did that go down? I'm not sure. I got a shout-out from a friend, and he said, uh, congrats on your shout-out on uh, Dice Tower, and I didn't know it, so... <laughs> I guess he's picked it up just on Board Game Geek. I'm not sure. Oh wow! So yeah, just just out of the blue. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I was uh, actually shocked to hear about it. So. Oh wow! So when did you hear about that? Was that um was that before the Kickstarter launched, or when was that? Yeah, I guess it was uh, about right after Christmas, I think. Oh wow! So they had right before, and they told you about it. That's pretty cool. Awesome. So um, now, per se, somebody's falling asleep. It wouldn't be because of you or this great game, Richard. It'd be because of me and my podcast. At the time of this recording, what we're at the the Fourth of July, and we've already released 101 episodes for the year. So they get a little tired of hearing me drone on and on. Um, but they've suddenly been jolted awake, so they don't hit the oncoming traffic on their way to work. Um, why should they take a chance on Viking Jarl, especially with all the other great games that are out there on the Kickstarter currently? I basically try to put a story into the game. Uh, the story is about uh, the king is getting old and his four children are fighting to be the next ruler. So it's basically four siblings playing the board game uh, against each other to be the next ruler. And I think that makes uh, something different to the game. that. Uh, you can uh, reenact to a, a character. You can be one of the characters. And well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we always. That's one of the things we do here. At getting geeky with game relief. When we, um, well, we sometimes we fall fallen out of doing it, but we try to. When we review a game, we try to tell a story to begin with um, on the game we just played and stuff. People seem to like that, so that's really cool that it involves a story or whatnot. Yeah, I think so because you. I, I think you get more into the game then, if you are a character. Yeah, most definitely. So, for, uh, if somebody wants to get Viking or all, they've liked what they heard and they have yet to be able to check out the Kickstarter page yet, um, what is this going to put them back or what will it cost for them to get a, get on board? Uh, I guess uh, about 58 American dollars uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, plus shipping. I guess shipping is about four or five dollars. I'm not sure about the tax rate now, but uh, I guess uh, not the tax, but would you call it? Uh, you know, the American dollars and the Norwegian kroner is uh, always uh, changing because we put the game out in yeah exchange rates. Yeah, that's right. We have put it out in Norwegian kroner, so so it is uh, different from day to day. So. Okay, so that means you're you're coming to us from somewhere else. Do you mind us asking whereabouts in the world you're at, Richard? I'm from the land of Vikings. I'm from Norway. Oh wow! So you're an actual. We're speaking with an actual Viking. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's pretty cool. So awesome. So um, yeah. So that's awesome. I don't know how it works over there. If you do, you guys have apps on like phone cellular phones and stuff. Yeah, we do. The next portion of our podcast, and you said you listened to some, is called Adventures in Application Acquisition, where we talk about an app, be it for your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, or even a video game. And it doesn't even necessarily have to do with tabletop board games or Vikings or anything like that. Is there an app you use a lot of that we can talk about for a moment? Oh, I use a lot. Uh, I guess I use, uh, let me see on my phone. <laughs> I guess uh, Snapchat. 
Okay, we can talk about that if you want. Um, so, per se, somebody lives under a rock. I know I do. Um, what can you tell us about Snapchat? Uh, an easy uh, way to uh, communicate with people with pictures. And uh, and the good thing about it is that uh, the pictures doesn't get store, uh, stored. So, you don't have a, to have a big uh, memory card. It's uh, You take a picture and you send it to your friend. You can make stories. Uh, yeah. No, it, you have to see it, and then it's uh, gone. Awesome. So if you own the rights to Snapchat, what would be one thing you would do to fix it or make it better, Richard? Yes, uh, uh, easy way to, if you want the picture, you can take a screenshot of it. But that is uh, not good resolution. So maybe put in something to save a picture you like, I guess. Okay, make an option so people can go in and save the pictures they like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I know it wasn't in the old days, but uh, maybe they have changed it now. But uh, before they didn't have it. So you have to take a screenshot of the picture. And you can't print that. It's too low resolution. So. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, so we try to make a green podcast around here. So if the creators of Snapchat or Snapchat or anybody who ever has anything to do with development or updates on it is ever listening. You heard it here first on Getting Geeky with Game Relief, what Richard, the creator of Viking Yarl, the board game, would do to make it a little bit better. So awesome. So that, that's cool. So mine is coming over there to the land of Vikings to stalk you or see what um, you have going on with your games. How would people go ahead and stay up to date with SB Games and Viking Jarl and all the fun stuff you have going on? Uh, right now we are uh, working hard on the Viking Jarl. So the best thing is to go on uh, Facebook, on our Viking Jarl Facebook page. Uh, that's where we put out the most uh, of the stuff we we do. We don't have a SB Games page yet, but uh, it's coming. Okay, so we can look out for that. But and probably another way, the best way to go in definitely would be to go to click on the link that we'll have in the show notes, and it'll take you directly to the Kickstarter page. And you can even if you don't have the funds to back it for very much, you can go ahead and put a dollar towards it, and then. That'll, when they send out updates, you'll get those as well. So I know you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, Richard, but if somebody backs Viking Yarl, um, when would they anticipate getting their game so they can go ahead and uh, try to become the victor of the game? We set uh, February next year. So we, we want to have a, a date that's, uh, that we can uh, fulfill, but it, it would be a bonus if we can get it out before Christmas. Uh, but to be sure and don't uh, disappoint our backers, we set February 2019. Yeah, so that's good. And it looks like they have until um, the 20th of July to go ahead and back this great game and then get it in February. So that's awesome. So any um, before we let you go, Richard, any final parting words on why they should at least go check out the Kickstarter page? I guess it's, it's a fun and exciting game. So go and check it out. It's... Uh... I guess you would like it if you like Vikings and strategic board games. I guess you would love this game. Okay, so yeah, so awesome. Go ahead and check that out if you like Vikings or strategic board games. Oh yeah, heck, you listen to the whole episode, you're through it. So at least, at the very least, you can do is go and check out the Kickstarter page and see what Richard's been talking about this whole time. Well, we don't want to keep you, I know we're in quite a bit different time zone and we're not, so I don't want to keep you all night. It's night over there. No, it's, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, 8.30 p.m. or, I guess? Okay, yeah, so it's in the evening. Okay, yeah, we don't want to keep you all night, but we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us. Yeah, thanks uh, to be on the show. It's uh, been a blast. No problem. I really appreciate it. And I just want to say uh, Happy Independence Day to all the Americans. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we appreciate that, Richard. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess you don't celebrate it. Do you have a Viking Day, or do they have anything similar over there in Norwegian? Yeah, we have 17th of May. The 17th of May. Okay, so we missed that. So I guess next, um, I know it's quite a bit in the future, but happy, What is what is it called? It's just happy birthday, we say. <laughs> okay, well, happy birthday coming the 17th of May over there in Norway. 
Thanks. No problem. Awesome. So yeah, we'll let you go, but we really appreciate you coming, taking time out of your day or night to join us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it was uh, fun. It's time for <laughs> Kickstarter Corner. <laughs> To begin now. I told y'all we had a lot of episodes to drop recently, so yeah, or in the near future, and this is one of them. So what I want to say, this will be the third episode that you've gotten today from getting geeky with Game Relief. Hopefully, you like what you're hearing. Anyways, let's get on with Kickstarter Corner, like she said, shall we? Yes, we shall. First off, are you going to be in Atlantic City, New Jersey? come this October or do you live not too far away I would highly recommend you go ahead and check out bringing HLG con to the next level high level games is hosting a convention in Atlantic City we and they want to have the best material on hand to create an awesome experience they're getting close to being funded and they still got 21 days to go go ahead and check it out even if you don't live there you can get some awesome advertising in and if you want to know more about it, you can go back and listen to the last episode we just dropped in which I interviewed Josh from High Level Games and he talks all about it. So I would definitely go back and check that out and you can do that and we'll see. Well, I don't know. I can't say will, but I was going to say we'll see you in Atlantic City in October. I wish that, that was the case for me, but it won't be. But anybody else who wants to go there, go check out this awesome Kickstarter page. And then next we've got Dragon Scales Fantasy RPG. Oh wait, did I tell you you have? Yeah, I did tell you. You have through the 26th of July to back to help HLG Con get to that next level. Anyways, going on, we got Dragon Scales Fantasy RPG by James M. Ward and Stephen A. Lee. It's a new fantasy RPG based on James M. Ward's card system. Leave the dice at home. Now you can use the card system. Explore Chromatic Kingdoms and the City of Concord and the Great Rift Cannon. They have funded and they've got a couple more days going through the 9th of July this Monday. So definitely check that one out. And then you may have remembered our, or you may have heard our Family Fun Day Friday last week. Anyway, we played Lunar 5000 and you can too by backing it on Kickstarter. They've got through the, what, the 12th of july it's a really fun game we all all the leafs liked it even though little leaf beat the pants off of us but it's a board game where players build and race in a personalized spaceship when the dice hit the table will you be in the winner's circle only one way to find out people you got to go ahead and back this game so it can become a reality if they don't make it i hope that they do go ahead and relaunch but let's help them make it do what we can and back this great game on the kickstarters Next, there is Crown of Aragon. It's a two-player card game of political, military, and economic area control that can be played in 15 minutes. And the Leafs are going to be reviewing this game for our Family Fun Day Fridays coming up in the near future. Anyways, go ahead and check out this great game going through the 27th of July on the Kickstarter. Go ahead and back it now. And then we've also got Kingdoms of Erdun. King of the Mountain Dwarven Expanse, and both the creator of that as well as the creator of Crown of Aragon are coming on the show as well. You'll hear from them in the very near future. So in Kingdoms of Erdun, the King of the Mountain Dwarven Expanse, you collect faction members and dominate the mountain in this fantasy set collection game strategy card game. Ages 10 through 10 plus and then two to five players. It's 15 to 45 minutes. They have funded and they're going through the 3rd of August. So definitely check out this game by Tim. And like I said, we're having Tim on the show. Next from Spider Mine Games, it's Elite Dangerous Battle Cards. You heard me right. Dangerous Battle Cards. Yes, sir, Bob. It's a two player expandable card game based in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. They have funded, they've actually overfunded. They were going for $22,500 goal, or just shy of that. And they're just over, they're like over 20, they're almost to $26,500. 
and you've got time to get in on this great game let's see here i'll scroll down through here i imagine they're going for stretch goals at the current time shall we see yes we shall if i can ever get there this is a long page well we're i think we're about there let's see if we are you never know with game relief he's a slow scroller yeah i'll be a slow scroller well they do have stretch goals and that's what they're working on right now a neoprene supreme game mat that's what they're trying to unlock right now so let's help them along the way they got to get to 30,000 and they're at almost 26 and a half thousand so go ahead and jump on the Kickstarter click that link below on the show notes and you can help them out through the 28th of July next we've got immortality it's a Greek mythology game with dice cards and more and they've funded as well so, Greek mythology for all to enjoy. Roll dice, draw a card, battle beast. Will you get out alive? And this game, it looks really cool. They've got some... I don't know how I would explain the art, but it is pretty stellar in my eyes. It's like a... Kind of like a retro, old school... Not quite video game-ish, but... It's pretty cool still, nonetheless. I like the art. Definitely check it out. Like I said, they have... Or I think I said... They have funded, they reached their goal, which was a low goal, and they're still going for another three weeks, going through Thursday, the 26th of July, so don't miss out on this Immortality, a Greek mythology game with dice and cards and more. Yes, sir, Bob, check that one out. And then you maybe heard our interview with the head of Delirious Games, but anyway, snag the flag, get moving, and laugh it up. Are you ready to make fitness fun and turn game night into an action-packed laugh fest for all ages? Well, you definitely want to check out Snag the Flag. They're over halfway funded, and it's $30 plus free shipping. I don't know if that's free in the U.S. or whatnot, but we just had the creator on the show the other day, so you can go back and listen to that. And like I said, they're halfway to their goal. To their goal or just shyly over that and they still got 20 days to go going through the 25th of july so definitely check out this family friendly game for ages six and plus and then last but not least on this week's well not this week's because we have a bunch of episodes coming out this week anyways from black key games we've got joust for fun it's a historically inaccurate card game whoa an easy to learn game for two to four players Full of pop culture twists, perfect puns, and unique combat system. Heck, just looking at the Kickstarter page, you have this lady that's riding, I don't know, it looked like a unicorn at first, but it's a pink pony. And then a gentleman riding a brown bear. And they were funded in under 72 hours. So, yeah, I would definitely check out this jousting game. Heck, I want to ask Black Key Games if they might be able to provide us with a preview copy i don't know if we'll have a chance but i'm gonna ask because this game looks awesome right now i think they're going for stretch goals let's see stretch goals twelve thousand dollars a new night and court cards times two definitely check it out there's an option for retailers all kinds of fun stuff on this kickstarter page just for fun a historically inaccurate card game they were going for $10,000. they are almost to $11,000. And you've got through the 5th of August. So definitely check out this game from Black Key Games. And do you want to hear your game featured on Getting Geeky with Game Relief? Then I would go ahead and suggest you either email us at GameReliefGo.com. Wait, GameRelief at GameReliefGo.com. But head over to the website. You can sign up for our mailing list. Get content before your friends. And then if you want to, you can also... Go ahead and send us a Facebook message at Getting Geeky with Game Relief. But anyways, I know you're celebrating the 4th of July. By the way, happy 4th of July from the Game Relief crowd. Anyways, it's our least favorite time, your least favorite time. Unless you're seeing all those fancy fireworks. But either way, don't burn your face off and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others into geek fold. We'll catch y'all on the flip side. Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up.
Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up.